So we're starting our prep with a orbital sander using 60 grit. This commercial grade paint is extremely hard, but for the most part, it did scuff up really, really well. And I wanna show you guys a little bit of something when you close up, when you're looking to scuff, you're looking for this powder. This is how you know that you did it right. Sometimes you'll go through a little bit. I just went through to my primer here. But if you're not sure, scuff some more. From there, we just really went to town with it. We used one of the scuff pads that came with it to get in between all the ridges that took the longest. And then of course, removing whatever we could remove and getting that off and getting that sanded down as well. Next step is using our painter solvent, also known as MEK Substitute. This is the recommended solvent from Monster Liner. You want to use this on every single spot that you scuffed on your vehicle. If you miss something, the liner is not going to adhere to it properly. So make sure that you go through and you really get it cleaned up. Okay, so I'm using the Magnapotsy 2K primer for our bus to cover the bare metal that we had that we took off with a grinder to get some of our decals off. However, the alternative that you can use is a product that they make called Chassis Saver. They recommend getting the silver or the gloss black to use as a primer. Now it's time to mix up our liner. This is the Tintable Liner Gallon. And with this, I'm gonna be putting in the Performance Catalyst, it's purple but don't worry it's not going to affect your color at all then we mix in our tint i'm using johnny popper which is a really cool kind of john deere green color the best thing about these monster liner colors is that they are uv permanent years from now this color is going to look just as good as the day that we're putting it on the bus when you mix you want to mix for a good three to five minutes i like mixing in these clear buckets because i can see that it is clearly mixed together every time i need to pour into my tray again i also mix it up another trick you can do is to pour mek on top of it every time you need to step away. And then when you come back, you mix that MEK into it. This will help extend the working time as they only have three to five hours of pot life once they're mixed together. Okay, so we're putting on our first coat. You will see some show through on your first coat. That's very, very common. You don't wanna put it on too heavy, but you don't wanna put it on too light. And then we also used hand brushes and got through all these ridged panels and honestly most of our bus was hand brushed and then we also used a roller we simply used a roller because we just weren't able to get a sprayer and be able to actively use that where we're located at where our build is so a roller was what was best for us i've also done four other vehicles this way and i'm very very good with it as you can see after the second coat is on it's nice and thick when this stuff is dry it is basically bulletproof it is safe to drive after 24 hours but you should give it at least a full week to cure for it to be a hundred percent hard and that is if you're going to use it in a storage bay or a truck bed two weeks would be the most ideal as you can see, the texture is really, really nice. We did a back roll or what they call a back roll on ours in order to get this texture. We wanted it to kind of match what that brush was doing. A tighter texture that almost looks like what you would get with a sprayer. Masking is also extremely important. You wanna make sure that everything is masked off really, really well. Otherwise, you could end up getting it stuck to something that you really don't want it to get stuck to. And here's an example of our masking. We wanted to do something really cool with the black. So at this point, we've got most of our green on. Um, I'm about to start doing the hood. I decided that I wanted something to kind of break up the color scheme because we're going to be using black on this. So I went ahead and started doing a design with tape here. Um, the main thing about tape is when you're pulling your tape, don't pull it too tight because you need to be able to get it rubbed into the texture in order to get a really nice clean line. Obviously, as always, keep track, try to get it all even, and make sure that you mask uh, properly when you're using two colors because the rollers splatter. If you're spraying, there's obviously overspray. So you wanna make sure that you don't mess up all that really nice base color that you've already put on by not masking it off properly. Let's get going with some black. 
So as you can see, we also taped off all of our rubber gaskets on the bus. We couldn't remove these, so we went ahead and taped them. As this is a textured surface, there's always a chance that you're gonna get bleed through on your tape, but there are ways that you can make it a little bit more possible to get a really nice good line. And one of those ways is not applying too much pressure when you're putting your second color on. Additionally, we did also re-prep all the green where we were applying the black. We re-scuffed it and we hit it with an extra layer of MEK just to make sure that the black would adhere to it properly. This also helps make sure that everything stays really nice and sharp and clean. It is important that you always re-scuff and re-MEK any liner that sat for longer than about 12 hours. You can reapply liner for up to 24 hours, but it's best to just play it safe. If you're doing a big project like this that's gonna take days, then you're gonna have to do that. And now we're gonna pull the tape. Look how nice this looks. It is very sharp. This is probably the best I could get for this particular project. This is a really nice line, and I think it looks really, really cool. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. Now at this stage, I am pulling this right after I put on my second coat. It's really important that you pull it while it's still wet in order to get the sharpest line. If you wait, it will stick to the liner and it will pull the liner around a little bit when you go to pull your tape. Another little tip is if you do get any splatters from using two colors, as long as that liner is still wet on your second color, you can go in with some MEK and a rag and you can scrub the first layer color and get that second color off of it so you can get a nice clean color with no drips or drops. Look how nice this looks. I'm extremely pleased with this. I think this black and green color combo is really gorgeous. Now we just gotta get the rest of it done. So I want to talk a little bit about the tape. While I did use some blue tape on the hood, I am using this masking tape for the back sides. And I just really like this stuff because it's much, much easier to get into the texture of the liner. As you can see, I just kind of freehanded my decals. I'll probably go back and readjust them at some point and get some fresh liner on them. Uh, after doing this, I realized that my lines on the sides are a little thin and the tape thickness is actually where I really wanted them to be. But I'm really loving the design that's coming out. I also want to show you my secret weapon. This is an ink brayer. This is a medium hardness ink brayer. And I use this to roll tape and actual decals into the texture of Monster Liner. I've had these things for years. I've used decals profusely on my builds before. And as you can see, if you really look, you can see how well it pushes the tape down into the texture of the liner. This again, helps get the sharpest possible line. And I went through, re-scuffed everywhere that was gonna be black, re emicated it. Just wanna reiterate that for you guys. You need to do that if you want it to adhere properly. And then I went through, and as soon as I got my second coat on, I pulled my tape.
So I want to talk about this roof line. We will be painting our roof white with a heat resistant paint here in the near future. So we just took the liner up to where we know that that overlap will be up to and we'll be making a sharper edge on that in the future. We had to go through, we did the bumpers, we went around all of our lights and I retaped off a section of the hood where the graphics were in order to protect the green area of those graphics from any type of splatter that may have happened and just to help me have less work in the future when it comes to the cleanup of this black once we're done with it. I also went through and taped off my little front section of graphics. I wanted the black to blend into the green, so I made sure to do that on all the corners of this bus in order to make it a nice cohesive look. We started getting up top. We left that section yellow as we ended up painting it green. I forgot to film that day, I'm so sorry, but we did fill it in with green up there. I used the Rust-Oleum 2X Paint and Primer in Satin Black to do all of my detail work on anything that needed to be touched up, small edges, things that I couldn't use the black liner on. I used the Monster Liners Door Jam Paint in black, although you can get this in any color that they make. I decided to use this for our front door as it's mostly hinges and this has a much smoother texture than the Monster Liner does, but of course it's the exact same shade of black, which made it look really, really clean and it just finished off the entire build. 